Hello, today we create a couple of attributes, slider attributes, hopefully in five minutes. We have some prerequisites, just go here to edits plugins and look at your game feature plugin. There it's mine and you go to edit, scrolling a bit down and make sure that you have the gameplay abilities in here as dependencies, we will need it later. We have to use a bit of C++ today, not really programming, but copy pasting a bit because we need to recompile attribute sets that is not possible within uh, Lyra and Pure Blueprint, but yeah, we still stay within it. Let's have a look what attributes look like and what are kind of presets for attributes. If I am here in my demo level and I get actually my attributes, then I um, toggle this app, uh, ability debugger. And here on the left, you see a couple of standard attributes that come with every gameplay ability like health, max health and so on. That comes from Lyra, but it's not that easily extendable at least not within the blueprint area. It's actually not that hard. So let's think about how we could use it. If we have something here, I'm opening here my um, ability set and here I can grant attribute sets. And here you see the predefined ones that come with Lyra and we think about how to add one of our design. So for an attribute, set that is essentially a C++ class. So what we have to do, we go to tools, say new C++ class, and we just say none as parent class, go to next. Make sure that we really select our runtime here. So that is Bastian runtime in my case, and we want to be it public. So there are two folders, one public, one private, and then we give it a name. The name is important. We have to remember that because that is the name that we will use to create the code for these classes. So if that is all done, we just say, now we copy it here and create the class. And then Whistle Studio should open in the background, needs to be installed there, and it will generate these new two things. We say it can be loaded anew, and then we can already close it for the moment. We go back to Unreal. Um, there's this um, live compiler that should be green, and then yeah, let's close it down and say Windows Tools and refresh the Visual Studio solution. Having made that, we can actually close the engine, go back to Visual Studio and reopen that. This back and forth is a bit because at least in my case, it was a bit tricky to get both um, coordinated. So I, I do it the safe way. So let's go to yeah, you see here the, the, the two new files here. Let's open it here. The one is .h, the other one is .cpp. .h is kind of declaring for the public and .cpp is the implementation phase. What they do, we don't care because we generate the code, we don't program here. That is more from a course like from Tuxisto or somebody like that. Have a look at your runtime build CS. It's important that you have here gameplay abilities, gameplay text and Lyra game. Make sure to have that, otherwise your compiling creation might fail. Now we switch to this gameplay uh, attribute code uh, creator. You see the links in the description and below. Important, we need here the name of the whole thing and that needs to be the same, otherwise it will fail. So we copy that name, go back and pass it in. Then some comment that makes sense. We will create more than one set in the long run. And I here just wildly copied every attribute that came in my mind. And um, that's also something that we will a bit clean up in, the, in, in later stages, but enough for the moment. And we just go to this small button and say, create. What it will do, it will really take your attributes and create two code files, one for the .h, one for the CPP. We just copy it, go to our H, delete it and pass the new one in. Same thing with the CPP. We again, the small button here, you click it, you copy it, and then you again pass it in to the C++ one. You see, there's a lot of things going on, nobody cares. Um, we just really make sure that we save it, compile it, and hopefully have success doing so. Just here, create the project should be fast because it only creates what has changed. So in our case, just a plugin, just a couple of files really. And that is a success. Let's look at Lyra if that is really usable. So we just start Lyra out of the engine and speed it up a bit. And here we are. So 
First thing, is it there? Is it usable? So what we can do, we go in our abilities folder here and have this ability set. And here down below, we can grant abilities, uh, attributes, sorry. And here you see, yeah, attribute set BA default is now there, it's selectable. So we just select it, close it down and start the engine. Let's do it again from here. So we have a full screen. Okay, again, our demo map, we go here, our get GAs. So we have our gameplay abilities. We go to the debug menu for abilities. And here on the left, you see now everything that we defined here is now an attribute that we can use for the future. Yeah, we can also debug it a bit with this ability system debug attribute and then naming your attribute. Uh, just showcase it here for two or three of them. Then you have it permanently in your in your uh, GUI and yeah, you can debug it. You see at the moment, they don't make too much sense. They're all at zero. So we don't really have a way to address them, um, to couple them to, to our um, abilities. So that is, will be topic of the next couple of videos, but at least we have a good start and made it in uh, six and a half minutes. Thank you very much. See you soon. Bye.